All right, so today I wanted to talk about the difference between being correct and protocol, following protocol, and actually being human and right. What's correct and following protocol? Just put it out quickly. Anybody have any? Our idea of good manners or the yep. policies in an organization. Yeah, good. Or the unspoken policies in relationships. Yep. What the external world expects or requires. Or you believe the external right. world expects yeah. and requires. Rules. 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 Yep. Yep. That's being correct and following protocol. What's being right? Human. It's appropriate in each situation, mm -hmm. regardless of what you may believe or what attachments to rules you do or do not have. So the person who does correct, that's right, the person who does correct usually thinks they are appropriate. Mm -hmm. right? All the time. All the time. Always appropriate because they always follow the rules. And it's always this way. That's right. And the person who they see as being right or, or is human, they're tactless. Correct? Yeah. They don't, they're, they're just, they don't, they don't fit in, they're not doing right, they're not. So I wanted to tell some stories today of um, this sort of thing. And I wanted to um, look at some of the things that I've seen over the years. <clears throat> so I'm going to go beyond, pretty much beyond my time with Baba. With Baba, Baba completely taught me the difference between being human and following rules. That was the thing he kept on showing me over and over and over again. So I'm going to be, um, here we go. First story. I am very, very, very pregnant with Aaron. And Ian is three years old. And there is a sandbox cover on the sandbox that played with at Yale Divinity School. And what happened was we had to keep that cover on so the cats didn't get in. So I took the cover off, which was difficult. It was very, very heavy. And Ian was playing. And then Ian had to go to the bathroom. Now, the apartment was maybe 50 yards tops from this. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you were there. Yeah. 50 yards More tops. I did not cover the sandbox because we were coming back. I left all the toys, went, and went, came back, and we were playing. And when we came back, this woman who was in charge of the area, and she was a div student, so she was going to become a priest. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 she was going to become a priest, said to me, I had broken the rule, I was bad, this was horrible, how dare I, it was just like, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I am very pregnant, I can't do this, it's very hard, I will close it when we leave, we just had to go and come back, it's only for a minute, no, I was wrong, I was bad and wrong, and she was like, really taking her job to the and let's get real. It was about a cover on a sandbox in a play area. So it never finished. Aaron was born, and the day I was about to leave the div school, I had had enough. So I walked up to her apartment, and I think I took it in. I think I took it in with me. Pretty sure he'll 
correct me if I'm wrong. And um, I knocked on her door. She answered, and I looked at her, and I said to her, this is probably the most immature thing I've ever done in my life, but... <coughs> <laughs> And I turned and left. She was highly insulted, kept to her rigidity, and sent me a card quoting from the Bible anti-Semitic quotes. Who was what in that little story? She thought she was correct. She was correct. She was correct all the way through. Even the Bible covered for her. She was correct all the way through. And she never let go. Never let go. Next story. And this will come in, in waves. because it. I always took Ian to church. So Ian would go to chapel at Div School, and then he would go to a solemn mass down the hill at a beautiful church in New Haven. And my job was to keep Ian comfortable. He was a, from one to three. And one day, a professor, who was also a priest, was a priest. Bill, I think so. Bill? Mm. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, yeah he was. He was. Okay. he was. I remember. He was. He turned to me and said, you make me feel bad. And I looked at him like, what? He said, because you have a child that sits in church. And I just wrote an article for, for a magazine that's telling people they shouldn't bring their kids to church. Because children can't handle church. I said, well, my job is to make him comfortable, and so by making him comfortable, he enjoys being here. Mm -hmm. No, you just have a special child. No, I just make him comfortable. No, you have a special child. So we had a little thing. Years later, saw him again at St. Matthew's in Wilton, and now I have two. And he says, you now have two special children. And I said, no, I just do the same thing. Well, was I okay for bringing my children to church? Yeah. But not, well, not to him. Not to him. I wasn't. Yeah. Can I do the politically incorrect thing and the human thing and ask the heat to be turned down a little bit? I'm really, really. That should be like turned. Is that off? No, I'm not. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but he had an idea. Yeah. He had an idea. Yeah. He had a total. And it was fixed. All children cannot. That's right. He was absolutely set with it. And there was no alternative as to what you were doing in terms of, no, I just make them comfortable. That's right. There was no sense that you could actually do that. No sense. Okay, so next story. We're at St. Matthew's. I'm just putting it out here, St. Matthew's, Wilton, Connecticut. And everybody knows what about Wilton, Connecticut? Ste well, Stepford, Stepford Wives. Wives. Yeah. That's where it came from, the guy. That's what they were talking about, that area. That's where we lived. And it was first year there, and there was going to be an open house for Christmas. And Aaron is now not even a year old and Ian is just turned four and they both have terrible bronchitis. Horrible bronchitis. And there's an open house for, at the rector's place. House. So I chose not to go. I want to stay home with my children. Everybody was very, very annoyed, upset. My then mother-in-law 
was furious at me. And my response was that in 20 years, nobody would care if I had been at that party, but my children would care that I wasn't there. And they still remember, Ian remembers, they were a little too young. They were really sick. Did I do the right thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was I correct? Yeah. No. Not according to that system. Not according to that system. So do you have to have guts? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You have to have guts. The accommodator becomes the collaborator. The accomplice. The accommodator becomes the collaborator. The accomplice. Okay? Next story. Still at St. Matthew's. Got a call. Or my then husband, who was a curate, comes home and says that people were complaining about that I was nursing Aaron in church. Now, people who know me, I stay pretty covered. I sat in the back of the church. I had baggy things. Who could see me? If they were all focused forward, <laughs> who was looking? The only ones that could look was the choir. <laughs> and that's a, quite a distance, they had good eyesight. <laughs> but I kept baggy. I mean, there was nothing to see. So um, I was told that they may do that in India, but they don't do that here in the United States. So I called the rector, and I had a little conversation with him. And I said, so would it be okay if I brought a bottle? and fed him with a bottle at the back of the church. And his response was, that was fine. So I said, so it's not about food, it's about breasts? And he said, we will not be talking about this ever again. And that was the end. I was not very correct, was I? Another story. First time, first event at that church went to a casual, again it's casual, dinner. Brought my kids, They just we just moved. And I was wearing the best casual clothing I had, which was a cotton pair of pants, it was still warm, a cotton matching t-shirt, and white flats. Best I had at that time. We had no money. And we knock on the door, and the woman, who's the hostess, opens the door, and I go to myself, phew, she's wearing similar clothing. So I'm like, well, oh, it's going to be okay. So she brings us in, everything. I then, she excuses herself. And what happens, she went to change. And as the other people showed up, every woman was in black silk pants, white, they had their own uniforms, but I did not fit in, white silk blouse and a scarf. And I was completely out of sync. What should she have done? She just stayed the way that she was when she first welcomed you in. As the hostess, it's her job to make sure that everyone is comfortable and everyone is okay. Mm -hmm. And at least I would have been 
her there to say, no, it's fine, you guys are lovely too. <clears throat> that was not Wilton, Connecticut at all. Wilton, Connecticut is all about protocol, following the rules. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just thinking with that uniform, which airline did they all these women? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Good yeah. comment. Yes. But it was absolutely. Easter was, um, what was it? Laura Ashley. Oh. Puff. With the puff. Sorry. <laughs> you remember? True? Yes. True? Yes. It was like, and so with the nursing thing, I got the, this was nine months into our stay there, and they said to me, we've put up with you for nine months, now you have to toe the line. So, I did do something bad. <laughs> that following week was Aaron's baptism. And I made sure Aaron and I were late for it. We did. We got late. We were late for church. I was late for church. I made them wait. But, no. Nope. Human protocol. How many people here will accommodate in situations over and over and over again inappropriately? And what do you end up doing? Causing injury. Do we cause injury? So, next story. Hmm. Let's do the um, church. Continue with church. So every one, to, Ian would be in church, and one of the things that, no, he was the only child other than Aaron that was ever in church. Nobody was in church. None of the kids were in church, again. And so one time after church, Aaron, Ian started talking about the sermon. He was three, three and a half, going to be four, but he's been raised listening. And one of the women at the coffee hour looks at me with Ian, not that far down from me, um, says, we'll all be happier when he knows he's not an adult. Was she appropriate? Was she correct? In her mind. In her mind. In her mind. Was Ian being incorrect? in her mind. Yes. 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 Was he tactless? Yes. Yes. And you start to see this four square of what it means to be human and where we are and where what do we choose to do. So another story. We came, I'm here in Baltimore, and I'm at a church in Pikesville. And most of you know um, what occurred over the years. I was there for 12, 13 years, lived in the rectory. And things that would happen would be like, toward the end, was that we were not allowed to use the chairs in the parish hall for Aaron's birthday party. Correct? Yes. Correct. Sure. You were there for that. Yeah. Correct? Human? No. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Crab feast. Every year they had a crab feast. Toward the last few years, Ian, Aaron, and myself were charged to be there. Now, we've got to remember, my then husband was the rector of the church. He was the priest of the church. 
but I had to pay to go to the crab pigs with the kids. So what did I do? Not being a really good collaborator. I didn't go. But where was I? People remember? I sat on the veranda. <laughs> I sat on the veranda. The, the the church was here, over here, and there was a an island, and then there was the house. And so I sat right here on the veranda, watching them at the crab feast outside, just hanging out. We were in a we had our own picnic table, and we just hung out. Following rules? No. Last story. I'm living here now. And I go to get my eyeglasses changed. And I go to walk into this place where this guy I had always gone to this eyeglass store. And the guy said to me, um, you know, was the priest still at the church? And I go, no, we're divorced. And he was defrocked. And he says to me, well, he and I said he was defrocked for molestation, child molestation. And he said, well, there's always two sides to every story. And I did what? No. I told him he was absolutely right. There are two sides to every story. And I asked him, do you have kids? And he said, yes, he had girls. I said, did you ever touch them inappropriately? Ever, you know, by accident, ever. You know, he looks at me, he says, no. I said, he said, maybe when there were babies, but no. I said, and he said, and if I did, I'd make sure I never did it again. I said, good, that's right. I said, well, my ex had 15 to 20 accidents. There are two sides to every story. He had accidents. And I left it like that. He knew. He got it. And then I didn't go back again. <laughs> Why do we follow protocol? It's something that, in each of those stories, I caused something that people don't like. What is it? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Discomfort. So if we follow the rules, if we accommodate, if we just do exactly the right, the correct way, though, Follow those rules. We are not creating any kind of waves. And then what happens? You're hurting yourself. We're causing so much injury, especially and most importantly to ourselves. And it's we believe we're protecting ourselves. We really do. We think we're doing the safe thing. We believe we're actually protecting ourselves. And what we're doing is we're not questioning, are these rules good rules? Are these rules based on being human? Are they healthy? And most people don't question it at all which then puts them in a situation where they're over and over and over again.
party. There was a great one just remembered at the church here in Baltimore where at coffee hour somebody had brought cookies. Usually did. And Ann and Aaron, they were maybe nine and six, something like that, maybe a little older. And they went and they started eating the cookies. And of course, what did I get? A phone call, I believe it was a phone call from the person who made the cookies that Ann and Aaron were inappropriate for eating the cookies and that they were eating too many cookies at coffee hour and that they needed to be stopped. So what did I do? Did you bake cookies? No. no. I, I went, I had first had the kids write the letter they wanted to write, which was right on letter, but, and then they wrote the letter, they, they were so polite, they apologized for having eaten cookies, for going to coffee hour and eating too many, they basically made that person feel really, really stupid. By doing what? Using their own manners and rules. Unbelievable. Too many cookies. And what, what I was using, most of these stories are little nothing stories. I had talked to Ian and Aaron last night and I said I would, we decided I wasn't going to give the shocker stories. I was going to just give the regular nothing stories. And if you look at these stories, it, it, it's in everything, it's in every fiber. How many times as we go through the day? Do we decide not to do human? Do we decide not to have somebody be a human across from us? How many times do we just follow protocol? Just follow those rules that we accommodate? And we forget that God is everywhere and God dwells within everyone and we end up treating each other, ourselves, and God so poorly. Yeah. I have a question. In, in some of the examples that you most of the examples that you gave, I can really see what's human and what's not human. But then there are the situations where I'm like, uh, I'm back and forth with the voice, voices. And da -da 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 -da, you know, it's kind of look at this way, then I'm looking at that way. Looking at this way, looking at this way. Um, obviously, you know, the need is to go in mm -hmm. and know what's really human. But boy, that's tricky. It's, it's really hard, and so sometimes you're called to act immediately, immediately mm -hmm. and then you just have to go with something. Um, maybe you'll change your mind later, maybe that wasn't human, maybe then you can do something about it. But then it you later. can learn from it. You can learn from it. But you can learn from it if you actually reflect, mm -hmm. if you're actually aware, if you're actually looking at it, if you just act and not then think about it or, or focus only on yourself in that regard, yes. then you can't learn from it and you can't see, oh my God, I wasn't human to that person. I didn't really care about that person. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, okay, you can use the bathroom. 
<laughs> yeah, this thing bad, this bad. Right. No, th these two are both following rules, basically. When we decide to be human, we're still not human. We may do an external behavior that's better, but we're still not human. It is not until we let go of both of those sides and go into our own hearts and feel truly. Then we get to be appropriate and human. Otherwise, we're tactless and we get to be called correct. so many stories. I lived in church housing for so long. Man, correct versus, oh my God, human. Most of the time, it's structured and it is not human. Can I, is that the side of it is, mm -hmm. their side of it, the airline stewardesses I'm thinking of now. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty easy to see that side. Right, that is. You come along, and uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see with you standing there not wearing the same clothes. That mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, it's all going to go to hell in the handbasket because you've worn the wrong color shirt, blouse. Right. So that's easy to see. The whole structure will fall apart. Right. But what I find find difficult is when. Um, I'm standing there in your blouse at that, yeah. <laughs> confronted by those women, and um, when I'm in your shoes, why does it always feel like, even when I do my best to conform, I still feel like I'm falling down the rabbit hole? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the things that I always felt with the joke about Wilton, and see if this is, answers anything, was that nobody fit in. But nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you. That was the joke. That was the joke. Uh -huh. that, uh, <laughs> he lived there <laughs> a long time. That nobody actually fits in. The rule is, the rule is that everybody is to conform to a structure that nobody knows who set the structure into motion. And so everybody is striving to fit in. Everybody is feeling completely insecure and uncomfortable. But their job is to make it look like they're completely fine and you're not. That's part of the game. None of them did. And I, that was that kind of a church. But then I, the church I was here in, in Baltimore was a different style church where they were not, they were more blue collar. Yeah, it was a more blue collar type of church where they had different rules for attire, but it still, it still had the same thing. One day, I, and this is where having to step back and be comfortable in my own skin from years of doing that, and one time I walked into the church during a Saturday as everybody's getting ready, the flowers and everything, and I had on pink chucks and um, anklets and a pink dress, short dress, cotton, summer, and I was in chucks. And um, everybody knows what Chucks look like? The sneakers. Chuck sneakers. Mm -hmm. the Converse. Converse. Converse Chucks. Converse though. Yes. Only mine were magenta. And I had different colored ones. I liked different colored ones. And one of the older parishioners, who was a sharp guy, simple but sharp guy, said, I dare you to wear that to church. 
And he knew I wouldn't, but he didn't. I wore it them. I was in church with them. People stared. I didn't care at that point. Didn't care. But that's the thing of being able to be comfortable in your own skin, no matter what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I just uh, just to keep the something occurred to me there. Maybe I could share this. Um, I, just with the clothes metaphor again, I uh, thought of the emperor's new clothes mm -hmm. in Hans Christian Andersen's story. Yeah. And um, everybody was in that four square, and the only person that's not on is off the four square is the the child. You know, out of the mouth of babes. That's comes, right. They cry. He's wearing no clothes. That's right. Yeah. That's he's, the kid is off, the child is off. That's right, he's not, he's not playing in the, he's just being, oh, alive and human and comfortable and he's just saying what he actually sees. That's right. Because all the people in that story, and by the way, in Wilton, I used to tell Ian and Aaron the Emperor's New Clothes story was told a thousand times because that's what it felt like we were living in the Emperor's New Clothes story lived in it, lived in it, and that everybody was afraid to say that the emperor had no clothes on. Everybody there, and that's, that is the game. And so that what our job is to, is this appropriate? Because we're talking about that situ kind of situation, but you should be able to do that. That, we go into really harsh situations where there's war, where Germany, World War II, the accommodator became the collaborator here. Everybody was trying to fit in. People knew things but didn't say anything. They were fitting in. So you get to see it, it looks like it's, these are simple little somethings, but it, as you spread it, as you see it, it can cause so much injury and hurt everywhere. And our job is to go back to God. And if we're going back to God, then we have to remember that everybody is also God. And we have to, and that doesn't mean we're supposed to then get along with vice, but it means we're supposed to see it, learn from it, speak up and be appropriate. We're supposed to be appropriate and human. Sometimes opening your mouth is absolutely the most appropriate and human thing to do. Other times the most appropriate and human thing is to keep your mouth shut. And it's knowing when and what. But for this, Max, is being able to see it and assess it. Because if I'm caught in it and I want to fit in, and I'm not aware that I want to fit in, and I'm not aware that I'm a, an accommodator, I'm not going to be able to see the picture. I'm not going to understand what is actually going on. Yeah. It reminds me of um, last week's class on risk and mm -hmm. how if you are assessing, like, like you know, truly in your mm -hmm. heart, then in each moment it's not a risk, it's just acting appropriately to say. Exactly. Exactly, so that you see exactly the right thing and appropriate. And so that, are you going to cause discomfort at times? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. It's okay. You need to be okay in your own skin. You need to be able to, in your own skin, know. And if you're wrong, truly wrong, you'll find out and then you can learn from it. But if we are always blindly accommodating and blindly following, we never find out. And I gotta say something else. It's not fun to follow that rigid protocol. Sometimes if it's appropriate, yes. But if it's inappropriate, there's no play, there's no joy, it's just a rigid Thing. 
So you have to put the human back into the structure. Yeah. Um, it's it kind of, and when you said that about the the structure, about like the discipline, and it, you have to be, I guess, even careful with the word structure and discipline because you have like the good and then you have the bad. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're um, in like a box, so to speak, where you're doing something that's not good for you, mm -hmm. you don't. There's not an opportunity to grow. It's just it, it's just an, an increase in frustration, mm -hmm. and then when you do have a good kind of discipline, even though it's disciplined and it's structured, you still have an opportunity, you're still there with yourself and you're still growing. So it, it's it's so interesting because in that good structure, it's not like you're you're capped off. You still have this tremendous growth. Yeah, capacity. Right. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I talked about um, with the kids is that I didn't protect them in a way of sheltering them, bringing them up. I protected them by giving them the skills to handle what came in front of them, whatever that was, so that they developed the capability to face whatever came. But if I'm, when you're locked in a structure into a protocol, you can't handle the thing that comes out, that shows up, that doesn't fit according to your particular system. So Aaron's valedictorian for, for um, UMBC, Honors College, he's getting his degree. Uh, or uh, I think it's the, they had a ceremony and the, um, it was in an a auditorium, but not too large because it's not a lot, there wasn't a lot of people. And um, Ian and Aaron, were, obviously Aaron was there, but Ian was there, and their biological father, the defrocked priest, showed up. And what happened was he started taking photos. And where Ian and I are somewhere, and this guy is taking photos of Ian. And he started to take photos. And Ian walked up to him publicly. He was sitting down and he walked up to him and said, I don't appreciate having my picture taken by a convicted child molester and do not take a picture of the one you molested. Bum! Everybody in the area went, <gasps> Human? Correct? No, this is supposed to be a happy time. We're celebrating. So when it came time for Aaron to walk across the stage, the guy picked up the camera to take a photo. And the guy next to him took his hand and stopped him from doing it. And that's where it shows how right it was for Ian to say that to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have his, the, uh, his own good sense that someone else could mm -hmm. reinforce mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what Ian was saying and show that it was the right thing. Yeah. So you start to look at, and for people who know, that parish, not the, the diocese, the diocese was totally superb and excellent, but the parish, the parish backed him 100% even after the trial. They followed, they bought the protocol that particular protocol. They brought, bought the whole thing. And it took that parish years to heal. You have to be human. Not easy.
lots of times. How many times have we been in rooms where somebody says something and we just... So my final, final story. Clinton, Connecticut. You know where Clinton, Connecticut is? By the water, it's very pretty. But it was where the Grand Master of the Ku Klux Klan lived. I don't know Favorite place. <laughs> so after dip school, you have to find a job. So my then husband was looking to become a curate, and we go to Clinton, Connecticut to find this, to look at this place. And, oh, I was like horrified by the place, but we're sitting at lunch, and Ian's with me. Ian's three years old, I'm pregnant, and we're sitting at lunch. I remember it was a round table, and they're all, we're all sitting, and I was in a place where I could never get up. You know, it's those slide-in booth sort mm -hmm. of thing. And one of the people actually starts talking and saying that we've worked really hard and we've been successful in keeping Jews out of the area. Well, except they forgot me because I was sitting there. And though I was um, now Episcopalian, and they didn't know, I came from a Jewish background. So I was sitting there, and it wasn't my position to say anything. Who should have said something? He should have said, our interview's over, we're leaving now. Let us help you with that goal. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I started sliding under the table, which is my tendency when those things happen and I, I don't have a place to, to go or I'm not allowed to use my mouth. I to order to start doing this. Slide under the table. Um, he didn't say a word. Not one word. Inappropriate? Extreme. Now, I've been doing stories one way, crossing the street once in Pikesville, and my then husband had his collar on, and some guy screams out, get out of our town. And I screamed back at him, I don't remember what I screamed back at, I screamed something back at him. Crazy. Everybody's so sure they're correct. All protocol is correct. All that structure is correct. The great story of Baba in, I know I said I wouldn't tell another story, but at um, in Harlem at um, Black Theater Group, is that what it was called? And everybody's talking about, you know, prejudice and this and color and that. And Bobo says, well, actually, everybody's blue. The truth, we're all blue. That brilliant, exquisite blue that when we turn in and let go, oh, beautiful blue, and we're all that.
we need to remember it. So, work on that four square. Correct. Human. Appropriate. Thank you. Thank you.